Sanchez, who had threatened to try to boycott the summit over the treatment of Gibraltar. In Northern Ireland, the former Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson has been warmly welcomed at the Democratic Unionist Party conference, where he strongly condemned Mrs May's deal. Jane Dodge is in Belfast tonight. Jane. Well, if the issues weren't so serious, this weekend's conference could be compared to a political dating game. The DUP has been wooed first by the government in the form of the Chancellor, Philip Hammond, then by the former Foreign Secretary, Boris Johnson. The party finds itself in the most powerful position of its lifetime, centre stage in the political drama of the day. Boris Johnson and... They stood and cheered. Hard to imagine Boris Johnson getting this type of welcome anywhere else right now. Philip Hammond certainly didn't get it when he came yesterday. Boris Johnson is a big box office draw for the DUP, but is also speaking their language for now. We are on the verge of making a historic mistake. And I just say this, unless we change course, we are going to stay in the customs union, we're going to stay in the single market, and we're going to be rules takers. And unless we junk this backstop, we are going to find that Brussels has got us exactly where they want us. He had them laughing in the aisles, but at the core of his speech, a radical departure from the government's position no Northern Ireland backstop and no EU payout until we've got a better deal. It's just the sort of treat the party faithful wanted to hear. I just like his characteristics, I like his, um, his humour and uh, enjoy seeing him. Do you think he could be the next Prime Minister? I don't know. That's all in the good hands of the Almighty. Well, it would be very exciting, wouldn't it? Uh, and it would be different, but I don't think so. Why not? Uh, he's a man uh, that doesn't abide by the rules. Um, no, he's too controversial. And he's sympathetic to the union's point of view, and that's good news. Uh, but we need to have, uh, at the very top of the party, uh, Theresa May's uh, level, also to understand the union's position. Away from the conference in East Belfast, the cranes of the Harland and Wolf shipyards still dominate the skyline. This is traditional DUP territory. The majority of people here voted to leave. At the Welders Club, people feel abandoned by Theresa May. Personally speaking, I, I think we, we're sold down the river. I think overall she is trying to please everybody, but she can't please everybody. It was a hard job she was yeah. given. Yeah. Yeah. I think Theresa May, to accept this deal, is actually going to keep us tied in you know, for years down the line. Our party leader, Arlene Foster. Back at the conference, the DUP's leader is keeping her suitors guessing. She described the Prime Minister as genuine and thanked her for her hard work. But she made it clear she is not budging on her opposition to the withdrawal agreement. The choice is not between this deal and no deal, despite what the government's spin machine may say. The reality is that if we are to secure a better outcome than is currently on offer, then the only option is to look beyond the current draft withdrawal agreement and work in the time ahead for an improved outcome. The light continues to fade on this Brexit deal with the DUP adamant they won't back it. Parliamentary approval of it seems less likely now than ever. Well, earlier I spoke to the DUP MP Sammy Wilson and I asked him if Philip Hammond was right to be optimistic that the DUP would end up supporting the deal. He certainly got no indication last night that we'd be voting for the deal and he certainly shouldn't take any message from the conference this afternoon that we'll be voting for this deal. In fact, um, he reinforced our views of this deal, namely that it was not good for Northern Ireland. His argument was that he didn't believe it was good for Northern Ireland but it would never be used. Our argument is that it's not good for Northern Ireland and it's going to be a legally binding contract which the government will sign up to. So under no circumstances can we support it. Has he suggested 
that the deal could be renegotiated in any way, because obviously the Prime Minister is saying, this is it, this is the best deal we're going to get. He argued last night that the deal would not be renegotiated. In fact, he tried to scare um, the audience by saying that the alternative was a Jeremy Corbyn government, though how you leap from voting down the deal to having a Jeremy Corbyn government, I'm not quite sure. Your leader, uh, Arlene Foster, told The Times that the deal is worse a prospect than having Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister, as far as you're concerned. Um, can you just talk us through that? I suppose what she meant was that Jeremy Corbyn believes in a united Ireland and pr probably would work to promote a united Ireland. This deal actually delivers Northern Ireland out of the United Kingdom, separate from the United Kingdom, cut off from our main market in GB. So faced with this choice, you would be prepared to work with Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister, is that what you're saying? No, because that's not the choice. The choice is to make sure that this deal does not go through. The policy isn't going to change under Theresa May, so should you change Theresa May? I mean, you have Boris Johnson there today speaking your language. If, if he was leading the Conservative Party, would the confidence and supply arrangement be safe? Well, you know, uh, first of all, the internal arrangements of the, the Conservative Party and who leads the Conservative Party is no business of ours. And, you know, all we're saying is a change of policy. I don't care whether that change of policy is under Theresa May or under someone else. As far as we're concerned, that's the only thing that we're aiming for. I know you don't want to talk about the circumstances under which you'll bring down the government, um, but it is clearly the implicit threat. And you, you have... term... and you seem determined to ask yeah. me about well, that, because that, and I am determined not that to That is go why down you are important, you. because you have the power to bring down the government. If the government had a majority, nobody would be talking to you right now. Our main focus is to make sure that this deal does not go through. If this deal does not go through, then the bone of contention between us and the government will have been remedied. Did you think it's dem democratic that such a small group of people, such as the DUP, should be able to hold the power over this deal for the whole country? I don't think that you've been studying what's happening in the House of Commons too much if you ask me that question. Because, actually, we're probably fairly irrelevant now. The odds are now so stacked against this deal because the government has annoyed the Remainers in its own party, the Leavers in its own party. So, you know, don't argue that we're holding anyone to ransom. Sammy Wilson from the DUP. Now, police in France have used tear gas and water cannon against protesters demonstrating about the rising cost of fuel. Protesters clashed with police on the Champs-Élysées, where large security cordons were in place to protect key buildings like the Élysée Palace. Jessica Savage reports. It's hard to believe the scenes on Paris's world-famous Champs-Élysées today. It arguably looked more like a war zone. The beauty of the iconic Arc de Triomphe overshadowed by fire and smoke. Huge crowds of demonstrators hurled rocks and dug up the pavements. The police responded with water cannon and tear gas. So far, hundreds have been injured and two people killed as the French expressed their anger against rising fuel taxes, which the government justifies as an anti-pollution levy. While officials have branded some as rebels, many protesters say they're simply exercising a right. They're gassing us, they're gassing us. They're gassing us. They gave us the authority to march, and now they're blocking us. We are unarmed. As night draws in on the French capital, the fiery fury of the protesters shows no sign of abating. A man has been arrested after a British transport police officer was stabbed at a railway station. The incident happened outside Ilford Station shortly before 10 last night. The British Transport Police Federation said the officer was fortunate to be with colleagues at the time. The Federation chairman said the attack was the latest example of an epidemic of senseless acts of violence against officers. In a separate incident, police have launched a murder inquiry after a man in his 20s was stabbed in Hackney. A new political party hoping to challenge what it calls the establishment says it has more than 100 candidates ready to stand at the next general election. The Renew Party UK, which is anti-Brexit, had its official launch today and says it's a party ready to inspire change. Its leader says existing political parties are not delivering and people deserve more from their politicians.
We believe firmly that we need to reform politics. Really, you know, nuts and bolts reform. It's bloated, it's just lazy, and it's not working for the people, and that's what it's meant to do. And we feel that we can also help to reboot Britain. So we're bringing people from outside politics, and we can start to change the direction of our country. Rugby Union and England faced bitter rivals Australia at Twickenham today as the autumn international matches came to a close. After some mixed results, the home side were aiming to finish the year with a win as they prepare for next year's World Cup. Here's Jack Taylor. No matter the sport, England versus Australia is always a fierce contest and this was no different. Just two minutes in, Johnny May grabbed the ball and found the corner. A good start for the home side, but the Wallabies soon bounce back. Israel Folau's brilliant try cutting England's lead. With the scores level, the home side ran riot in the second half. Elliot Daly simply too quick for Australia, England ahead once again. Eddie Jones' team stretched their lead just 10 minutes later. Joe Cockenasiga leaving a helpless Australian defence behind to score.